answer this question. Mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan, let's talk a little bit about his performance and kind of where you think he is. Yeah, and I want to be clear about this. I, I'm not saying like we got to get rid of Kyle. I just my frustration is is that on social media, it seems like everybody breaks him down like he's an offensive coordinator, right? Okay. It's always the same things. Well, he's put look at the plays he's designing. Look at that's all fantastic. If he's an offensive coordinator, he can have those excuses. But much like a chef, right? If if I have a chef and he's only a chef and the food comes out terrible, I blame the chef. But in this instance, he's the chef and he's the guy shopping for the ingredients, right? So I can't just yeah. be like, well, it was the guy that shopped for the ingredients. The chef's fine. This guy shopping for ingredients. Well, that's also Kyle. So we have to look at Kyle as a head coach, good or bad, right? And, and that does go both ways because there are things that Kyle does really well. He develops coaches extremely well. He develops late round picks and undrafted players extremely well. Those are things he does really good as a head coach. But to me, he has too many head scratchers. And again, I I know that this is a small blip, especially because there was no injury, but I tweeted it out in the moment just to make sure that people know I'm not going back after the fact. Why are you why are you running Debo Samuel? to end the half when you have 86 yards to go. Like that's the that's what we want to do a week after you just lost your starting quarterback and now you're trying to throw your best weapon out there who by the way got hurt earlier in this game. You're going to throw him out there and hope that he can break it 86 yards for a touchdown and run him right at the teeth of the D. I just I those little decisions to me irk me so much. And it, it gives me pause with Kyle because I feel like there are so many little things that I can point to. It's like, this guy's not progressing. He's not getting any better. He's not learning from his mistakes. He's doubling down. That's where I'm at with Kyle. I'm, I'm frustrated, but I also am wanting him to succeed. And to me, there's a couple ways this can go. If they're really bad this season, Jack, I actually think I will learn more about Kyle Shanahan if this team is bad than if it's good. And the reason I say that is bad teams, locker rooms start to separate, right? And if he can hold it all together, even if they're atrocious, that tells me that he's still got the pulse of this locker room. And that's very important to me. Plus, I know that Kyle Shanahan is the best chance for Trey Lance long-term to be successful because if they bring in a new regime, they're not tied to Trey. There's a chance Trey is out of here and replaced. So I'm rooting for Kyle. I don't want him fired, but man, you got to show me something. Well, you know, I, I love you, Jesse, and I'm so glad that you brought up that third down play call because I know we talked about this on Twitter today. So I'm really glad that you brought that one up <laughs> because I watched it. I didn't have a feeling one way or another about it. I was like, yeah, it's kind of a throwaway call, right? That's my, my feeling on it was it's, you know, you're, he decided that he's going to go in at the half and he's just going to let it run out. And as I said to you on Twitter today, and a lot of the folks on here probably don't follow us on Twitter, so they might not see the back and forth, but it's kind of the same thing as what he did in Chicago, right? Last year where it's the end of the, well, in, in Chicago, it wasn't at the end of the half though. It was third and 19 in the middle of the third quarter. And you throw a little screen out to the left side and he busts it. And so that's the only thing that I, if I'm going to, that's, from a from the coaching standpoint, I think that's the thought process is I'm going to give the ball to my playmaker. I'm going to see if I can get lucky and have him bust one right here. That's the only way that I can defend that that call. I also don't really have the concern that you have when it comes to running Debo Samuel. Uh, I think that Debo's built to, to do those things. I just wish that he would fall to the ground instead of standing up and letting 10 guys hit him. <laughs> but I, I think that he's built to... I've said this a few times, and you, probably to you too. Debo Samuel is Ricky Waters. Mm -hmm. They're built the same. Yep. They play the game the same way. I think Debo's a little more physical, but Ricky Waters was a wide receiver at Notre Dame before he became a running back, before he got drafted by the 49ers. And with Debo, it's kind of been the other, it's kind of been the same thing. He was a wide receiver, got drafted, and now he's playing running back, right? Yeah. So they're very similar, and you know. So anyway, with that play and that kind of thing, staying on that on that topic as far as Kyle Shanahan and the way that he utilizes Debo, I don't I don't have a worry with 
I don't worry about that piece of it. I think, you know, you, you the other piece, you know, is, is you do have to separate Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator from Kyle Shanahan, the, the head coach. I will give him one last piece of the props before I kind of hammer on the, the negative side. He also gets credit for what this defense is doing because he's putting that together sure. as well. Okay. Right. We both agree with that on that, I think. And I do agree with you. I think the if you're looking at, D, at at him, the the issues with Kyle Shanahan and why Kyle Shanahan's teams are not getting over the hump is because he hasn't made the right choices at the quarterback spot. You don't like Jimmy Garoppolo or you don't feel like I mean, that was a bad word. Wording. You don't believe Jimmy Garoppolo is the guy to get the 49ers a Super Bowl ring. I don't think so either. Based on history, he'd have to overcome 50, whatever, how many Super Bowls they've had that all that history in order to do it, because there's never been a guy that's lost his first trip to the Super Bowl. That's come back, made it back to the Super Bowl and then won it, let alone uh, that isn't in the Hall of Fame. Everybody that's done yep. that's in the Hall of Fame. There's only one quarterback that's ever lost in the Super Bowl, the first trip to the Super Bowl, and even made it back, see. who who um, isn't in the Hall of Fame. The only guy that's done it that's not in the Hall of Fame at all is uh, Craig Morton. He's the only quarterback that's lost in his first first game in the Super Bowl, his first start, come back, played, started another Super Bowl, but isn't a Hall of Famer. Everybody else has been in there. And uh, that's 50, whatever. I don't know how many Super Bowls. But he are. didn't win it, right? So Who's that? Uh Yes. No, you're right. No. Yeah. Craig Morton lost both times. He lost with uh, the Cowboys and he lost to the Cowboys with the, with the Broncos. So I'm just saying, I, again, that goes back to the Jimmy thing, though. I, that's why I don't believe that he he's going to have if he, the 49ers are going to win the Super Bowl this year, they're going to have to overcome a lot of history. I didn't think they were going to win the Super Bowl Trey Lance either this year, just because of the history there at that spot, too, with a first year starter, you know, that kind of thing. But with, at least with Trey Lance, you're building to the future. And we don't know where that is right now. Um, so that's that's the thing when you when you look at, at, at Shanahan. If you're going to get on him, it's the failure to develop the quarterback position, and it's it's the failure to eliminate the little things that cause your teams to lose, like just the stupid boneheaded penalties that they get. I mean, Spencer Burford gets you know, Spencer Burford gets a lot of love because he's a rookie. He was awful on Sunday on Sunday, Monday, Sunday night. He was not good. Yeah. He, yep. He jumped off sides. The next play, he gives up a sack. And I know that Jimmy steps out of bounds, and we want to. And it's Jimmy Garoppolo's fault for that whole play. But it starts because Spencer Burford gets beat one on one really quick in the middle of the line, and that guy gets in his face. And there's nowhere for him to go because the outside gets beat too. So I don't know. It's it's a it's an interesting discussion when you look at uh, at Kyle Shanahan because I, I I I probably if you if you look at my stuff on Twitter, you probably think I'm a I'm a Shanna Shanna stand. I, I'm not really. I just I think a lot of what he does as a head coach makes sense. And I'm talking a lot here, taking up a lot of your time. No, you're but fine. From what you said earlier, you know, as far as if he can keep this locker room intact, he'll show you something. That's partly why I feel the way that it is, because I felt like he did that last year, getting from three and five to the NFC championship game. Yeah, I um I agree with that. I for but to me, I feel like this season has more on it just slightly more i feel like it might be a little bit more intense in that locker room because of the decision he made at the beginning of the season i think there might be some contention there and i could be wrong but i you know i just want to see it play out and either way we're going to learn something about kyle either either he's going to show it twice that he can pull this team from the depths and make the playoffs which is also very impressive or they're going to have a losing season and he's going to be able to keep it together, which would also be impressive in my eyes. And so I think two of the three options that could happen with this team and with Kyle Shanahan, he ends up looking really good in my eyes. Anyways, I don't know about everybody else. I can't speak for them, but for me, he would look really good in two of those three scenarios. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how this thing plays out with, with, uh, with the season and kind of where it, where it's going. And, you know, this defense has been, has been good. You figured that side of it out. Um, he came with a, with a good comment here. He says, uh, Eddie would be angry over what is on the field. He would want to fire someone for it. I, I think that you're right. I think he would. <laughs> there was a there was a topic on Twitter last year, last week, right? Jesse Sapolu talked about how the media was at, was at fault for uh, for, mm -hmm. for Bill Walsh wanting yeah. to resign. Yeah. In reality, if anybody who really paid attention to the situation understands that it was that it was the friction that he had with Eddie DeBarlo over the fact that he didn't win 
playoff game for three years. Yep. That, that's really yeah, Eddie. That Eddie, listen, there was you don't you didn't mess around with not winning in San Francisco when Eddie was around. That's the way that that went. The, the way that I understand it, he did fire him at one point at some point in '87. And if it hadn't been for Carmen Policy, he would have been fired. Yeah, Carmen Policy is the one that that put that whole thing together. It's amazing what <laughs> happens when you read books and you learn things from from the past. You know, every once yeah, in a while, absolutely. it's good to do that. Don't don't believe everything you read on the internet. Sometimes actually pick up a book and you know crack it open. <laughs> that's usually that's what most books sound like these days, right? Because we don't look at them anymore. 